Hey, what's going on guys? This is Joe Young coming at you another video for the week. This week, I want to kind of talk about the topic of how stressful it is to own a high-end coral or a high-end anything really. But in this case, I want to talk about how stressful it is to own a high-end anemone. Now, I decided to make this specific video because I had a question uh, about getting an update on my Colorado Sunburst anemone. So I want to take you guys back to July 2019 when I first got this anemone. So when I first got this anemone, it was no bigger than maybe three inches wide when it was fully open. And to be honest, it was the most colorful uh, anemone I've ever seen in person. I've kept rose bubble tip anemones for about a year long. And, you know, for the most part, it did plenty of splits. It was pretty easy to maintain. Really nothing special that it needed to, to be done to actually, you know, keep these guys healthy. So that's why I decided to jump into higher end anemones just because I wanted something a little bit more colorful and I decided to jump into pretty much one of the most expensive anemones ever. So after getting the anemone, about a week to two weeks later, it started getting really, really sick. I have another video in terms of how I got sick and all that stuff. Um, so if you guys are interested in that, you can click uh, you know, on the link above here. Uh, but pretty much the anemone got sick and for about a month long, I was kind of constantly stressing about, you know, is this anemone going to die? You know, did I waste my money? Um, and, you know, what did I do wrong? You know, what could I have done? You know, should I have done this? And it was just a bunch of different scenarios that went through my head trying to figure out, you know, what I could have done differently. And I think that by having and owning something so expensive, I think that you kind of try to, uh, you know, treat it a little bit differently uh, versus like, you know, a normal anemone. Like for example, um, you know, I normally, you know, feed my anemones, you know, just normal raw cut up shrimp. You know, nothing special. They'll take some flakes from the clownfish when, you know, I feed that. But I went through a whole ordeal in terms of, you know, listening to a bunch of people online saying that, oh, you know, you shouldn't feed them shrimp, you should feed them this, you should feed them that, you should feed them this. And I went through and I bought like a bunch of stuff just to see if I can try to save this anemone enemy just because I thought that, um, you know, feeding it raw shrimp was the issue. And it could have been, it might have been, I don't know. But, you know, for the past year or so when I kept the rose bubble tip anemone, enemy, the only thing I fed was, was shrimp and it did fine. So what's interesting is like you you start to doubt yourself in, in some of the things that you do. And I think it comes to play because you don't want to lose something that was so expensive. It happens, you know, with other stuff like, you know, for example, like if you own like a, a goldfish, you know, versus like uh, owning a koi or owning like a, a discus, you know, they're, you know, 10x or, you know, 100x, you know, the magnitude in terms of pricing and you treat it a lot differently. You try to get the best, you know, filter, you try to get the best tank, you try to get the best setups and all that. And sometimes we kind of overdo it maybe. And luckily for me, uh, this anemone uh, turned around, uh, recovered after a month of treatment and slowly uh, started, you know, getting its normal uh, bubbles again, getting its normal colors. And everything was looking fine for about, you know, two to three months. And then the anemone started showing signs of it getting sick again. And this was probably around December uh, of that year. And so, you know, for me, recognizing that, you know, the first time around, uh, this time a, a much, much, much earlier, uh, you know, not getting to the point where it was like shriveled up to the point where it, you know, kind of retracted a little bit. Um, it didn't look like it was wanting to expand when, you know, the light was up. It didn't want to eat as much. So, you know, I, I went through another round of treatment and, What's funny was I had already gone through, you know, that whole treatment, the whole saga of like, you know, oh my God, stressed out. And I kind of like relapse, you know, thinking, oh my God, I'm going to lose this anemone. Oh my God, you know what, <laughs> what do I need to do to this tank to, to change all these parameters and whatnot? I had already gone through that. I had already gone through that stress, like, you know, several months ago. And I'm putting myself through the same stress just because this anemone was worth so much. And of course, because I already went through this and I knew what to look for, what to do, the anemone recovered, you know, right after the treatment, almost instantaneously. And fast forward, you know, another half a year or so, you know, this is what the anemone looks like today. You know, this, this anemone 
is ginormic. It's huge. You know, this is probably the one of the biggest anemones I've ever owned because uh, normally most of my anemones end up splitting uh, by the time it gets to around like six inches or so. Uh, this anemone is is huge. It's it's way bigger than six inches. It's probably closer to like you know like a foot long. The colors of this anemone is beautiful. It's it's gone through some different phases that uh, Sunburst does, and you know the color phase that I've seen this anemone go through has been you know. It's been truly, truly a blessing to witness some of this um, phase change uh, for that. To wrap this video up, I want to say an anemone is one of the easiest corals to keep ever. As long as you have your parameters in check and, of course, you get a healthy one. So one of the tips I would suggest is having you know some of these uh, common medicines in hand uh, just in case if you do get a sick fish or if you do get a sick coral, right? Uh, I think a lot of the stress that I had could have been avoided if I had a lot of this, you know, medicine or a lot of these things uh, ahead of time or, you know, did a little bit more research in terms of like what are some common uh, sickness that they can go through and these are how you treat them. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, make sure you guys are subscribed. And like always, until next time, guys, peace.